Hello everyone, back today with yet another vid. I've been uh, kind of cranking them out at a fair rate yet again, uh, but yeah, found a little bit of time so I thought I would um, come and give you another kind of list, sort of. Um, this isn't going to be like a ranking list or anything, so these are going to be in no particular order. Um, today I'm going to be looking at 10 of the most um, challenging records in my collection. Um, so I guess this is subjective, um, I've picked some albums that I found challenging, um, perhaps didn't get into them straight away for whatever reason, or a couple of albums that I maybe think that other people may find challenging, even if it clicked straight away with me. Um, so yeah, um, let's get straight into it with uh, what we've got going on in the background. Goddamn jewel case man, I need to start sorting that out. This is God Macabre with their debut and only full length album entitled The Winter Long. Um, so this band is out of Sweden or was out of Sweden. Um, this came out in 1993 and they play kind of a traditional style of Swedish death metal basically. So you've got the chunky kind of um, Boss HM2 guitar tone that you can hear in the background. Buzzsaw guitars, sounds fucking awesome. Um, I get a kind of gloomy vibe from this one. I don't know if it's just the artwork or the music itself, but I, I find it kind of um, a bit more moody than the uh, rest of the bands in that scene. I think this is one of the best um, Swedish death metal albums, period. Um, it's fantastically written. Uh, the lead guitar kind of riffs flowing through the album are splendid, really, really memorable. They're proper earworms. Um, get stuck in your head, really gruff vocals that are kind of reminiscent of the kind of Stockholm um, death metal scene. Just a banger from beginning to end. I need to pick this one up on vinyl, I don't know why I haven't yet because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a black copy somewhere. But yeah, for now, go and check that out, that is absolutely splendid. That's God Macabre with um, the Winter Long. Right, so as I say, in no particular order, I've just pulled 10 records out that I think are challenging, not starter records by any means, um, yeah, and for several different reasons. Gonna sneeze. Ha, ah, nice, didn't sneeze. Okay, the first album is um, perhaps an obvious pick for an obvious reason. Um, the music itself is not challenging, however the vocal performance most certainly is. This is Merciful Fate's debut full length album entitled Melissa. Um, this one was released in 1983 originally. Um, and This is pretty much a traditional heavy metal record that sounded a bit more evil and wicked for the time, uh, which kind of made this band a little bit more renowned for being like a first wave black metal band even though nowadays there is nothing kind of reminiscent of black metal at all on this thing it just feels a little bit darker than what was going on at the time kind of elsewhere the thing that makes this challenging in my opinion is king diamond's vocal performance if you're not familiar with king diamond he has got insane kind of um falsetto vocals that are just piercingly high and he can maintain his kind of notes for a long time so he can just do verse after verse with this insane voice um he kind of then uh, tones things down a little bit with some kind of um more sort of evil sounding they're not quite wretches uh, but he sounds a bit more kind of goblin-esque and, and like he's been possessed by something i don't really know how to describe them but they're a bit more they're a bit lower um, and a bit more kind of just evil. Um, yeah, so King Diamond's vocals are definitely not a starter kind of move if you're going to go and listen to heavy metal. Um, if you want anything kind of similar, um, or if you want like a kind of similar example, sorry, um, then Rob Halford's kind of high vocals out of Judas Priest would absolutely be the one that jumps to mind straight away. Only ramped up tenfold and used all the way across the album. Uh, I love this band, I love King Diamond's vocals. Um, I got into them straight away, but I very much think that they are challenging, kind of, just objectively. So that's Merciful Face with Melissa to start things off very, very strongly. 
Next up is an album I found particularly challenging. So this is a record that I've shown fairly recently in one of my uh, vinyl update videos. Um, this is USA's Bell Witch with Mirror Reaper. Um, so this, I'm not sure if this was their third or fourth album. I could be entirely wrong there, excuse me. Um, but yeah, this is Funeral Doom. Very, very, very slow. Um, and very long. So this is one 82 minute track um, that spans over like four sides of record. This is a double. Um, this is really sad and somber and really like you would never throw this on to have like a good time. There is a certain feeling that you get from this. It's just pure sadness. Um, one of the band members died not long before this came out. Um, there's some posthumous vocals on this that he does. It's kind of spoken word. Um, it's just really, really miserable, crawling, um, just sluggish funeral doom that is just not a good time. You won't be pulling this record off the shelf very often because it is definitely like a... <laughs> either a mood killer or like mood dependent depending on how you're feeling at the time but yeah if you're feeling down and depressed this is a perfect perfect goddamn record go and check that out that's bell witch with mirror reaper it took me pretty much until this year uh, or the back end of last year to get into that properly just because of how kind of challenging it is it's just a, a it could be construed as a chore to get through um, if you're in the wrong mood for it. But yeah, Bell Witch, Mirror Reaper. Uh, next up is a fairly obvious choice. I have definitely shown this in another kind of vinyl update at some point. This is Revenge with Victory Intolerance Mastery. Um, so here I've picked one of Revenge's more kind of um, abrasive albums. Um, definitely not as cleanly produced as some of their other records, and I use the word cleanly, kind of um, loosely there. This is war metal, so this is the very definition of it. This is grindcore infused black death metal. Um, it is so aggressive, so pummeling. Um, it's just, the way I always describe it is, it sounds like you've given some Neanderthals, some instruments, and just recorded whatever fucking horrid noise they conjure up. Um, this is a challenge from beginning to end, regardless of uh, kind of how deep into metal you are. The vocals kind of range between horrifying shrieks um, that just pierce your ears and kind of really low grumbling gurgles that just make you want to vomit all over the place. Um, yeah, this is undoubtedly a challenging listen. Non-stop blast beats pretty much with kind of the odd kind of slower chunky guitar kind of um, section but yeah the um, The sort of clarity is very few and far between you need to listen to this enough to kind of be able to decipher um, Any of the riffs properly and kind of hear what's going on. This is wonderful though These guys are based out of Canada by the way and um, two-man band I believe um, Yeah an absolute blast from start to finish, uh, literally and figuratively. Go and check it out. Victory and Tolerance Mastery by The Mighty Revenge. Speaking of abrasive, here is a grindcore classic. This is Insect Warfare based out of Texas with their first and only full length album entitled World Extermination. Um, this one came out around 2007, I want to say, or 2006, somewhere around that um, kind of time frame. This is grindcore in its purest form. This is hate-filled, aggressive, raw, pummeling, destructive. The drumming is what rules the roost here. It's so high in the mix, but it sounds like it was recorded in a garage. So the snare sound sounds like it could bring down buildings. Um, the vocals are kind of, they just sound unhinged, really kind of high shrieks, um, kind of gruff growls, but they're sort of mid-register. They're not too low and gurgly. Um, the riffs are fantastic. They like the faster paced riffs when the kind of high tempo blasting drumming um, takes form they're not particularly um, 
sort of legible, but then they'll slow things down to a head nodding kind of um, head nodding kind of um, tempo, which just makes you want to obliterate everything in your path. Um, listen to this when you work out. Listen to this when you need to like. I don't know, break a shelf or something, I don't what a shelf? I don't know. When you need to deconstruct something, just put this on and it will be done in seconds. You mightn't even have to touch said shelf to bring it down if you've got this cranked uh, loud enough. That's Insect Warfare, World Extermination, the grindcore album for me, if you ask me. Um, fantastic shit. Unfortunately, that band didn't last very long. Um, but then we got Malignant Alter after that who also recently split up. They can't keep a band together by the sounds of it. So next up, we've got an album that I don't think would usually kind of creep into the challenging category, mainly because the production is kind of clear. You can hear most of what's going on here, but, and you'll see in a minute, this is one of the most unconventional pieces of death metal I have ever heard. This is Finland's Demolik with their debut and only full-length album. There's a bit of a theme going on here. Um, entitled Nespith. Whenever I kind of stop to think about how to describe this thing, the only thing I can come up with is this sounds like it was played and then flipped around so it's played backwards and then it was put out onto the record. The riffs sound so bizarre and so kind of just so weird and creepy that it just, it does sound like it's been turned on its head completely. Um, really, really technical. Um, it's very, very complex, um, which kind of adds to the, the kind of back to front sound. It just bobs all over the place. It's got a, like a really infectious groove to it even though it's very difficult to kind of nod along to it with it being so unconve unconventional. You can't kind of grasp um, the rhythm here. The time signatures are just completely lost on you as you're going through this. Um, the vocals are some of the most disgusting things I've ever heard. They're like, he sounds like he's burping into the mic on this thing. It is absolutely gross. Um, the drumming again is very unconventional. That's kind of what ru uh, runs the show for you to kind of um, bob your head along to it with but yeah man it's groovy and very very kind of unconventional at the same time weird and wonderful absolutely love this thing if you haven't checked that out go and check it out that's Demolik with Nespeeth definitely not a starter record for death metal um, definitely one that took me a few listens to get into and one I had to kind of leave alone for a bit and kind of come back to it when I was a bit younger and just kind of starting out my extreme metal journey killer stuff though so pleased to have that in my collection um, that is an absolute blast from start to finish okay how many we got left one two three four We've got five left, so we're halfway through. Next up, um, we've got a band, a modern band, that I personally cannot get enough of. Um, let's just get straight into it. This is USA's Pissgrave with their debut full-length album entitled Suicide Euphoria. Yeah. So, if you couldn't tell by the artwork, this is utterly disgusting so what that shows is the remnants of some guy's leg who had killed himself in a bath and just kind of his body had kind of liquefied so he turned into this kind of brown slurry which is absolutely fucking gross gets worse the more you stare at it um this is kind of death grind bordering on gore grind um so they've got like a old school death metal kind of feel which kind of tempts me away from gore grind or the gore grind kind of stamp this is kind of very lead driven surprisingly lead dri uh, driven very murky it's kind of um sort of um raw if you want to call it that it's, it's the rawest kind of death metal i think i've ever heard the vocals are kind of i think they're modulated so they sound like they sound like 
animalistic. The guy sounds genuinely inhuman. It's ridiculous, kind of how um, just insane the guy sounds. Um, he sounds like a big cat or something. You know when you hear like a, a cougar or something screech? It kind of sounds like that. That's what it reminds me of. Um, it's very ha uh, high tempo, blast beats, four days, but then they kind of slow things down to a like mid-paced crawl and it just sounds like, with the static, it sounds like there's some sort of horrible brown mist just kind of engulfing you um, as the sort of um, riffs take form. The more you listen to this, the more the riffs kind of become clear. Um, yeah, the grind elements kind of come through in the drumming mainly. Um, yeah, no brutal death metal on this thing, which again pushes me away from gold grind. Um, so if you like the sound of kind of old school death metal done in a kind of modern way, mixed with your grindcore influences, go and check this out. This is horrible. This is another album that took me a few kind of tries to, to kind of um, become acclimatized to, and now I can't get enough of Pissgrave's sound. I can't wait to see what these guys do next. Uh, they're probably due another album fairly soon. Um, yeah, go and check that out. Um, beware when looking at the album cover for their second full-length album, um, Posthumous Humiliation. Posthumous Humiliation indeed. Pissgrave, Suicide Euphoria. Okay, the next one. That was annoying, sorry. The next one, I am representing the band right here. This is Portugal's Black Solis with their fourth full length album, I believe, entitled Banished from Time. Um, this one came out in 2017, I believe. Um, I could be wrong there, so don't quote me on that. Um, this is the kind of epitome of the raw black metal sound. This is so kind of mystical and esoteric and uncomfortable and almost ritualistic. Um, it, it's almost unlistenable and unbearable. Um, I was so intoxicated by this album at first that I couldn't stop listening to it and I couldn't stop freaking myself out with it. Um, the, I've spoken about this in another vid, but I was sat in a very, very well-lit coffee shop when I listened to this for the first time, and I was still kind of petrified, rooted to my seat, um, just with kind of terror. I've not had a feeling for black metal quite like this since I heard Dear Mysterious Dom Satanas by Mayhem for the first time. It's that creepy and unsettling. Everything's shrouded in, like, viscous static. Um, the vocals come in the form of distant howls. It just makes you feel like you're in the middle of a forest um, and you're being watched by kind of animals and spirits and the supernatural from all different angles um, and you just don't have a fucking way to go um, to avoid them. Riffs kind of become a little bit clearer as you sit and listen to it more, but this is one of those albums you've just got to throw on some candles, switch all the goddamn lights off, and just get lost in. I love this album. I love everything this band has done and is doing, and I would love you guys to go and check this out. Black Solis, one of my favourite bands going. Banished from time. I could have put any of their albums on this list, but that one is the one that freaked me the fuck out. Right, we've got three albums left, um, all of which are kind of challenging in different ways. So the first one. I've gone with Focus by Cynic. Um, I cannot remember which country these guys are out of. I want to say USA, but I could be wrong there. Um, this is a very, very weird, very cosmic sounding, very extraterrestrial sounding form of progressive death metal. Um, now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that, like, I always say that death's progressive work is absolutely beyond the realms of kind of real enjoyment for me. Like, I, I dig them, but they're just not my cup of tea. This just kind of, um, it's a different kind of progressive. 
So the vocals for a start are very robotic and very kind of modulated um, for the most part. Um, and they kind of dot between kind of harsh vocals as well. Um, it sounds really futuristic and bizarre. The riffs are incredibly unpredictable. They just throw you off course when you think they're going in another direction. When they zig, when you zig, sorry, they zag, they fuck off the other direction and just leave you with your pants down. Um, I've not heard anything quite like this album before, aside from perhaps um, some of Obscura's work, who kind of clearly took inspiration from this project. Um, this one was originally released in 1993, by the way. Um, yeah, way ahead of its time. Very strange, very technical, very complex, um, and just purely bamboozling, to be honest. If you like the sound of that at all, go and check this out. Very challenging. Um, because I've been listening to Extreme Metal for quite a while before I listened to this, this one didn't take too much to get into, but um, I imagine this would definitely not be a starter record if you're just kind of getting into Extreme Metal. Um, so yeah, go and check that out. That's Cynic with Focus. From the complex to the downright primitive. This is Beherit with, um, wow, let's shift that before it falls on me, um, out of, where the fuck are these guys out of, I want to say Canada, that could be wrong though, I will correct that in the uh, description if I got it wrong, um, this is basically bestial black metal, um, so whilst Revenge add a kind of grindcore, um, tinge to their war metal or whatever you want to call it these guys kind of um just rip your face off with pure abominable hatred um there is definitely no grind here just black and death metal and arguably just black metal um blast beats are so low and rumbling and sort of noticeable on this thing um that it just sounds like pure chaos. If you could kind of capture the sound of an earthquake or tectonic plates shifting without actually kind of recording that sound, this is pretty much as close as you can get. Um, this is a compilation album, by the way. I think I started saying that and just didn't end up saying it. Apologies for that. Um, this is absolutely hideous. It is barbaric. It is brutal. It is unforgiving, very unpleasant to listen to. I still don't throw this on that often, but um, kind of, if you just have a, an itch that you need to scratch for just something that will rip your flesh off and set you on fire, then this is absolutely for you. This is the Oath of Black Blood, by the way. I definitely didn't say that either. Poor. Um, yeah, I fucking love this thing. It gets better every time I listen to it still. I notice new things about it every time because of the kind of um, raw sound and raw production. Um, yeah, this is one of those albums where you just progress and progress and progress through kind of lower and lower production and then you end up here at the very fucking bedrock. Caveman, whatever. Um... You've, you've found it when you get to this goddamn thing. As Beherit with the Oath of Black Blood. Um, what fell out of it in the middle here was this massive booklet. That probably would have broken my leg if it fell out the uh, middle there. Um, not literally, by the way. It's not that big. And last but certainly not least, I've got another kind of um, fairly recent one. This is an album I've been dying to talk about on this channel for a while because... For my liking, this band, and certainly this album, doesn't get enough praise. Apologies for the glossy cover. I can't take this one out of any jewel case. This is Aransi Pazuzu with their, oh, fuck knows, maybe third or fourth full-length album entitled Varitelliger. Definitely butchered that. Um, I'll put it in the uh, description. This is Finnish atmospheric black metal but done in a very psychedelic way. So this is, the black metal is unconventional on this thing. The only thing that's black metal about it is mainly the vocals. Um, everything else is weird. It's very bass orientated. Um, there's a track, I think it might be the fifth 
track maybe called Vassaman something 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 it's all in Finnish so don't ask me to pronounce it although for a bit of fun let's do it Vassaman Kaden Hierarchia oh it wasn't too bad I definitely butchered it still but it wasn't too bad um there's like a really really infectious bass groove that starts out from the beginning and then it transitions so that the psychedelic sounding guitars take guitars I did say guitars right there didn't I um takes over the bass um, riff and just completely swamps it in like I don't know it, it just sounds like a bad acid trip to me it just sounds like the deepest chasm that you could possibly go into after doing some sort of psychedelic drug um, it's really really uncomfortable lots of ambient sections um, a lot of atmosphere it just sounds like you're being sucked into a cosmic void and you're just swirling away and you're waiting for the kind of pressure to crush you into oblivion. Um, the vocals are high shrieks, but they're kind of pushed back in the mix and they've got an echoing kind of effect to them. Drumming is very, very complex. Love the tom work on this thing. It sounds very tribal and kind of primal and I really fucking dig it. Um, very, very like transcendental and very hypnotic. Um, you can just kind of sit and listen to those passages for ages. This is a double LP, so this is very, very challenging in its own right. Um, as you can tell, I love to gush over this thing. Just go and check it out. My description did not do that nearly as much justice as listening to it would. Aranti Pazuzu with Varit Telliger. Everything they've done to date has been fucking epic, but that one is what does it for me. So yeah, um, if you've kind of stayed in your comfort zone a bit hopefully you find something cool to listen to amongst those because although a lot of those are kind of um really really harsh you do become acclimatized to it and there is lots to appreciate within those records that you would otherwise miss out on um so if you listen to something like Behera, for example please keep going with it it will click eventually at first it'll feel like they've just curb stomped your face into the concrete um, but then the next time it'll probably feel exactly the same only you hear a little bit more and so on and so forth until it becomes your favorite goddamn band and you can come and thank me later but yeah thank you as always for watching as always take care and i will catch you in the next one